Call the meeting to order. I'd like to announce the meeting is being recorded in accordance with 940 CMR 29.10 remote participation adopted by the Greater Lowell Technical School Committee April 17, 2014. Committeeman O'Hare and Committeeman LeMay will be participating in tonight's meeting remotely. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? The flag of the United States of America. Do we have any public appearance? Any members from the public? I guess not, Mr. Chairman. Oh, we need a roll call. Oh. Roll call. Mr. Tassius? Here. Mr. Morin? Here. Yeah. Mr. O'Hare? Mr. O'Hare? Mr. Here. Mr. LeMay? Here. Mr. Sheehan. Mr. Gitcher? Yeah. Mr. Bahu? Here. Mr. Giggy. Here. And again, are there any members of the public to speak today? Uh, there are no members from the public to speak today, Mr. Chairman. All right. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to the student representative, Thomas Baronis, to go. give the student report. Thank you very Good much. Good to see you again. You too. Thank you. So this has been a busy month in Skills USA. The annual in-house award ceremony was held on Thursday, February 3rd in the main gym. 280 students received ribbons and certificates of excellence at this event. Thank you to all of the staff, administration, and school committee members who came out to support our students. In addition, Skills USA annual sale conference was held last week at Gillette Stadium in the Putnam Club, overlooking the Patriots playing field. This advanced level leadership training was attended by chapter officers and focused on networking skills, resume building, financial literacy, and interviewing and self-marketing skills. Skills USA is proud to announce that all six officers in attendance were awarded with their sale credentials after successfully passing the credentials exam. GSA members attended their first regional leadership meeting last week where they were able to interact with students from other GSAs in the area. Students explored various topics, such as LGBTQ history, LGBTQ in social media, as well as LGBTQ in their lives. In addition, student groups created presentations to educate the advisors and attendants. The freshman and sophomore class planning committees hosted a Valentine social last week. The ninth and 10th graders in attendance designed Valentines, crafted paper flower bouquets, and enjoyed pizza. This extended day event culminated with candy bingo, which ended at five o'clock when the late buses departed. The junior class planning committee is working on their next community service project, which will be a video for local nursing home residents that will provide some fun and uplifting messages from our students. Additionally, class ring sales have begun and any student interested in purchasing a class ring can do so at jostens.com. This past month, the senior class planning committee has been working to choose themes for their prom, which will take place on Friday, May 13th, 2022 at the end May. Once the choices have been narrowed, a ballot will be sent to the senior class to vote for a favorite. This year, prom tickets will be sold by, via My School Bucks, so there will be no waiting in lines to buy tickets. This month, the peer mentors hosted a virtual meeting for its members. Both mentors and mentees participated in a Kahoot game featuring questions about navigating through the school and where to go to for help. The Outing Club and Project Purple are in the process of planning a snow tubing field trip to Neshoba Valley, Valley Tubing Park in mid-March. This joint field trip will be open to all students and tickets will be available through My School Bucks after February vacation. In athletic news, the boys and girls basketball are both rounding into form as they head towards the home stretch of their seasons. The boys came out strong right from the opener and currently hold a 10-6 record. Recent league wins over Lowell Catholic and KIPP followed an impressive showing in the Greater Lawrence Holiday Tournament where the boys captured the championship with a win over Ipswich in the finals. After a slow start, the girls team has got, gotten going as of late, running off nine straight victories at one point moving the team's record to 10-5. to five. Both the boys and girls have also qualified for the MIAA state tournament play. Wrestling has battled th through their always difficult schedule. The Griffin Grapplers had strong showings at the Wilmington Sons of Italy tournament, as well as the George Bossi Holiday Tournament at UMass Lowell. 
The team also wrestled well at the annual state vocational meet on February 6th, poising 7th overall as a team out of a field of over 20. Indoor track has run well this winter, with a number of Griffin runners posting state qualifying times in a number of events. The team has also become one of the top programs in the CAC since their re-inception a few years ago. This year, our boys' team finished as the regular season dual meet championships, while our girls' team went undefeated and captured both the regular season duel and the CAC league meet championships. Senior Thiele Chandonnet was named league MVP on the girls' side, while Merrimack College bound on an athletic scholarship senior Albert Ferreras was named league MPV for the boys. Swim and Dive has recently pulled out consecutive wins over league opponents Northeast and Greater Lawrence. The team recently wrapped their season with a strong showing at the annual CAC League Meet held on February 3rd. The Griffin cheerleaders have begun what should be a successful invitational competition season, which began on February 6th at Lowell Catholic. The squad will compete in several more competitions to gear up for the MIAA D1 Regional Competition held in early March. And the Greater Lowell Neshoba Tech ice hockey team is looking to make a final push for an MIAA state tournament spot as they head into the final weeks of the season. The team currently sits at 8-10 after recent wins over East Boston and Minuteman. Additionally, the team recently raised over $7,000 in their Hockey Fights Cancer game on January 30th. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. As always, Tom. Thank great you, job. Thank Have you. a great night, everyone. Thank you. On to the approval of the minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 20th meeting? Yes, so move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Moran? Yes. Mr. Ovier? Mr. Ovier? Yes. Yeah. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. On to the report of the treasurer. Can I have a motion to waive the reading? So motion. Moved. Second? Second. Uh, roll call. Mr. Marmon? Yes. Mr. Ohia? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the expenditures of $4,213,294.69? So and second. second. Can I have a roll call? Mr. Moran. Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatia? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. The report of general counsel. I don't see them, so there's none. Superintendent's report. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Jill. Sure, thank you. So the first item on my agenda this evening is something very special. This evening, I'd like to ask our Assistant Superintendent Principal, Mr. B Michael Barton, to come up to join me in recognizing our team of four Greater Little Technical High School engineering students who are here with us this evening. Uh, Trevor Brown. Trevor, are you here? Do you wanna do you wanna stand up and come forward a minute? Trevor Brown, yeah, Evan Palmebong, Sam Soltani, and Sailor Vaugh. So these four students entered a national NASA sponsored high school competition to test a project on a NASA rocket. And they're here tonight with their instructor. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Barton to announce the very, very uh, special news that we're so very proud of uh, and wanted to honor these students this Great. evening. Sure. Congratulations. Uh, good evening, everyone. So tonight we're here to congratulate and celebrate four engineering students, two that are present with us, Trevor and Sayla, and their instructor, Ms. Ewins. Can I get up there? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, the, and Mr. Cornelia, the department chair, cluster chair is here as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Cornelia. These students entered NASA's TechRise Students Challenge under the direction of Ms. Ewens. This challenge invited projects to collect data from the edge of a space, from the edge of space aboard a suborbital rocket or high altitude balloon. Their project, preventing lunar dust damage, was selected out of 600 teams that applied throughout the United States. And I'm proud to say that only 57 teams were selected as winners, two in Massachusetts. 
So um, they want a chance yeah, to keep... Exactly. They want a chance to continue their experiment with a $1,500 prize from NASA, a three-dimensional box to um, develop their project, and a chance on a NASA flight to test their project. Um, they also have regular tech support from NASA engineers. So uh, we'd like to congratulate them, wish them continued luck in your project. I know you're going to be working on your project throughout this year and probably into next year, as I understand it. Yeah, so. they have to get the data back and then... We're going to do it some way. Actually, I'd like to, well, depending on how the project goes, it might be nice to get the data published someplace. Mm, even even great. Even another great accolade That's and accomplishment. So um, uh, on behalf of the Greater Mall Technical High School Committee and our entire school community, we just want to say congratulations. We're so proud of you. And uh, our school committee chair, Mr. Campton Giggy, would like to present you with a certificate of uh, appreciation on your innovation just uh, to, to show gratitude that we, we're so proud of you. And we want to wish you luck as you move forward. You make our team very proud here. Yes. Sayla, I have a certificate for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice job. There you Thank go. You so much. Trevor, Thank great you. job. Nice. Very impressive. We want to be very proud and great staff to help you. Do you, do you all want to share anything about your experience uh, working on this project? Uh, Sure, I'd probably say it was definitely a little bit of a surprise. I just felt like I was just doing my job, you know, getting by, and here we are. So I'd say we, everybody that was involved with it did a great job. It was yeah. really just a collaborative effort, and we didn't have, like, these team-building, like, moments that we can with these, like, technical programs. We probably wouldn't be able to do this. So I just want to say thank you guys for that. That was time to do that. Uh, so initially, we, well, we wrote the original like the plan, the, the idea that they selected probably three or four months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we were all brainstorming on that. And we just came to... Oh, you spent about a week on, on the proposal. Yeah, it felt, felt like a week. Maybe we'll have a week for the deadline. Wow. Yeah. We spent that whole week. Yeah. Creating. Yeah. Writing. Correcting. Drafting. Yep. Was there a lot of debate? Um, I mean, there was uh, a lot of... I think we like, all like, agreed on it. We had like one or two other ideas, but we agreed on the idea that I actually didn't, but when you first mentioned your idea, I was like, is that really true? You know, because I didn't realize that Luna Dust actually has magnetic properties. And yeah. I, I actually looked at that myself and I'm like, oh, that's actually really interesting. So uh, I thought that would, that was a great idea that you came up with. You know, a great observation in your research when you were brainstorming your, your design idea. So why does it have negative properties? Um, that's I actually a great question. I don't remember. Really? Is still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I got to hear. I want to hear the hypothesis here. <laughs> so now this is the second phase of the of the competition, correct? And you are actually testing your. Yeah, right now we're hypothesis. in the process of just you know finding out materials, ordering stuff, and just getting ready for the build. And I'm trying to figure out uh, and learn more about the programming side of it, and. Uh, I want to program to uh, collect the data when it's in space. That's awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. That's amazing. So is there anything that the school committee or anybody can help you with? Assist you. Somebody. Say we need money to support. Yeah, that. Fred's yeah, got it all. Yeah. So. The bomb is due. Oh, the bill of materials. Excuse me. I keep just saying the bomb. They're like, what? The bill of materials is actually due to our first meeting February 28th. But I also want to get the Gantt chart, which is the scheduled timeline. And our first test protocol, hopefully uh, by that day too, but definitely the bill of materials. So we'll see how things uh, add up because we have to get like a precision scale because the uh, the experimental payload has to be under a certain weight, um, you know, for balance of the rocket because it has other it has fifty six other payloads out there. Yeah, and then it has uh, Luna dust has properties so it could damage electronics, and um, because you're using magnets, it could interfere with other payloads. So we have to be very careful with our testing protocol and um, dispersion of the, um, the Luna dust. So those are things that came up with our meeting that we had. So what was the best part of this experience for? for um, I'd say the future, really. This is really just the gateway into securing all of our futures right now. So that's probably the best part, just knowing okay. that it's kind of insured now. And uh, as someone who wanted to be an um, aerospace engineer from the beginning, this is like a really mind-blowing opportunity. And I, yeah, well. 
I guess it is. I'm, I'm learning. It's I'm just a little too happy. So I guess I guess you're happy about making that choice your freshman, your uh, eighth grade year to come to a vocational high school. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool. like it. <clears throat> a great, great start on your career. It's a great opportunity for Ron. Come in and run Bahu and chair kicking and left in their arms, taking their pockets. I'm just make sure. Just you guys need. Make sure you just go right to these guys. So you learn a lot. As a school, we're here to support you, and we wish you great success. We're extremely proud, yeah, and you make our school look good. Great. I'm yes. national. It's national. Well, and I like the way they give credit to the entire team. That is a fantastic quality. Well, two of the members aren't here with us this yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. they yeah. were so fortunate. Yeah. Uh, I have to tell you, when the email came in, that it was confidential email, I thought it was spam. <laughs> and I almost deleted it. And I told the math engineers, I was like, you know what? I almost deleted that email because I thought that was just a spam email. And they're like, oh, you, you wouldn't be the only. There was like three other teachers they had a call because they did that. They didn't think it was. <laughs> wow. Wow. Congratulations. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Enjoy the next month. Really awesome. And thank you to our families. You you all should be very proud uh, of your children. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Now what? So we yeah we do good things. Yes, we do. Rebel in the moment. Yes, it's always good. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the next item on our agenda is our cooperative, my agenda, is our cooperative education report. Uh, and the report is in your packets. And the report that was provided with to you indicates 171 senior students participating in co-op education. Uh, as the end of January. However, I always love to bring good news. So at this time, I'd like to report that there are 195 total students participating in co-op at this time. 181 of them are, are seniors, which is 38% of the class of 2022, and 14 are juniors and counting. Uh, and a copy of this report is in your packet. So thank you again to our cooperative education director uh, for doing an awesome job uh, getting our students out on co-op. The next item on my agenda is an update on the general health and safety protocols. Uh, first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the mask mandate. Uh, on February 9th, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education announced uh, that the Commissioner of Elementary and Secondary Education will no longer be renewing the mask state requirement after it expires on February 28th. So as a result, there will no longer be a mask mandate in the state in the state for K through 12 schools. And as a result, effective Monday, February 28th, the mask requirement will be lifted. And uh, therefore, here at Great Old Old Technical High School, beginning February 28th, students and staff will no longer be required to wear a mask in the school building. It's important to note that any member of the school community who chooses to continue to still wear a mask will be able to do so, and we will support and respect everyone in the choices that, that they make. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, even though masks are, will no longer be required inside the school building, masks will still be required to be worn on school buses because this is a federal order that has not been lifted. Any questions about the mask mandate? No, it's great news. Yeah. Just tell, how about the polling and the testing? Did we so uh, that's my next, okay. my next item. So the next item on my agenda is the new statewide testing program. So we did a survey. Uh, we did a survey to our staff and families. And as a result of the sur survey that came back, uh, it was 70% uh, of the uh, individuals who took the survey wanted to opt into the new testing program. 
So as a result of that, we have decided to make the shift to the new testing program. Uh, and we have already began to make that shift. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what that new testing program looks like. So uh, the new testing program consists of a distribution of uh, at-home testing kits that will be distributed on a bi-weekly basis to whoever students and staff who opt into the program. Uh, and participants who opt in will be asked to take a test uh, each week uh, on before prior to school on Monday. That's a day that we just decided any school system who opts into this program has the choice to, to choose the day that they, uh, they prefer. So, and we opted to choose Monday because we do pool testing on Thursday. So anybody that opts into this program will have the ability to test at, at home using their antigen test on, uh, on Monday and then come to school and be part of our pool testing on Thursdays. Uh, anybody who opted into this program who receives a test kit, again, should be using it prior to school on Monday, and they're asked to report uh, their results, any positive results, to the nurses. Staff would report their positive results to our Director of Human Resources. Uh, in addition to uh, the test kit, we will continue with our symptomatic testing which is if a student or staff member comes to school and while they're here during the school day, they begin to exhibit symptoms of COVID-19, we have the ability to provide them with a Bionex Now rapid test on site and we'll continue that as part of the program. We will also continue with pool testing, which is of course here every Thursday and any pools, any pools that come back positive, uh, those individuals are retested on Friday. Uh, it's important to note that close contact tracing and uh, test and stay is no longer a part of this program and we will no longer be doing that. Uh, do we have any questions on the new testing program? So we will begin uh, the program on February 28th. So we are actually just distributing tests to those who signed opt-in already. Uh, Teachers were able to pick up their kits on Wednesday and Thursday who opted in. So, I mean, staff and uh, students will be picking up their kits tomorrow in the mall during their lunch periods by grade level. And that is the new testing program. Uh, it's important also to say that we will continue to use our other mitigation strategies, which include, you know, continuing to have vaccination clinics and maintaining good hand hygiene good cleaning practices, our ventilation systems, and also staying home when we're sick. So all these mitigation, mitigation strategies together hope to uh, keep a healthy and safety school community. And that is... Yes. Anybody that tests positive, would they be required to come to school? So, no, if, no, no, no. No. If, no. If, like the, on Monday, you mean? They have to bring in so no you don't bring in anything it's all at home this is all at home so it's an at-home test kit right. that we will provide bi-weekly right. on friday to students yeah. each test kit has two test kits that's why we're only distributing them bi-weekly mm -hmm. right and they would be required to use the test kit prior to school on monday right. and if they tested positive they should definitely stay home okay. and report nice. their results to the school nurse mm -hmm. saying that they tested positive. Mm -hmm. And the uh, adults that tested positive will report those results to the Director of Human Resources, as we have been doing throughout uh, the pandemic. So there's no more contact tracing? In the so there is no more contact tracing and no more test and stay. That's why we're, do, we're giving individuals the opportunity to get their at-home test kit. And the opt-in is rolling. Uh, some people signed up now. They can opt in at any time they choose, and we will be able to provide them with test kits. Any questions on the new testing program and the lifting of the mask mandate? Like yeah, uh, yeah I, I think uh, it's important to note the bus uh, 
the requirement of, of the mask on the buses. Yeah, it's uh, just that's federal. It's nothing. It's, it's federal and there's, yeah, we just have to keep. So the buses have face masks? Do the drivers have face masks? Yes, the, have the drivers like have that. masks and we have been supporting our, our drivers with masks for our students. I'm almost afraid to ask this question. Do we know anything about the vaccination rate here at the yep, school? Yeah, we do. So, so we, I have like an approximation uh, that we are nearing the 50% vaccination rate. So there is another clinic coming up. Uh, it's Tuesday. I'm sorry if it's either March 7th or 8th. I don't have a calendar, but it's that Tuesday and it will be three to seven. And there'll be information coming out soon with a link to register, but it's the 8th. So Tuesday, March 8th. So that's available plan. to students, families, and staff, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So those will continue again, as I said, all of our mitigation strategies and all yeah. of them working together should help us. Uh, it's also important to note that the numbers are going down uh, significantly. Great. All positive news on that. All front. positive news. And I hope that continues. And at this time, uh, that looks like that's the end of my report. But before I go, I'd just like to wish all of our students and their families and our staff a well-deserved February break. Uh, and I hope that they have fun, but at the same time, stay safe. Uh, and thank you all again for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Great job. Thank you. On to the report of the business manager. Here he comes. Is that you? He's had a busy day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just have, uh, one item for you this evening, though, and that's just a list of transfers. Um, so as I mentioned in our budget and finance meeting, we moved a bunch of money into the plant contract and services account at the beginning of the year once we re, um, created our budget in the November time frame um, and have been using those um, resources since that time to help facilitate purchases of equipment, um, supplies, other things needed throughout the school. Um, so you'll see a list of supplies um, uh, and other materials that were requested to our uh, department chairs and department heads um, that we were able to go ahead and, and get a purchase for. And now we just need to move the funding over to support that. Okay, motion to approve $174,684 from plant services to um, a number of our different departments. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Moran? Yes. Mr. Ovier? Here. Mr. LeMay? Here. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Bobo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Yes. That is it. Nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. On to old business. My term as chair is closing to an end. Is there any old business that we can wipe out off the list? Not yet. The fog coming. Yeah, that's got to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? All right, on to new business. Any new business to want to discuss? Any committeemen motions? Report of subcommittees, the finance subcommittee? Do you want to say anything? subcommittee, we had a meeting uh, earlier uh, this evening uh, with a proposal um, for our new uh, FY23 uh, budget. Um, it looks like we um, um, had a nice meeting. However, we uh, only proceeded to about half of the meeting. Therefore, um, I think the next school committee um, will be able to go ahead and elaborate a little bit more on that. Okay, thank you. Executive session, we're going to need a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if in the open meeting may be detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares, support staff, I need a motion and then I need a second. We're going to the executive session. We need to take a vote after executive session on the 20th. I think so. Yes. Okay. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Warren? Yeah. Mr. O'Hear? Mr. O'Hear? Yes. Mr. LeMay? 
Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatsiev? Yes. Mr. Kigi? Yes. And if a vote is required, we'll have to come back in open mm -hmm. session. We'll take a short break at this time. Call every meeting back to uh, order. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Mormon? Yeah. Mr. Lohia? Mr. LeMay? Yeah. Mr. Gitchia? Yeah. Mr. Babu? Here. Mr. Tatsia? Here. Mr. Kigi? Yeah. Here. <clears throat> I have a motion to approve the three-year contract for the Greater Lowell Educational Support Staff on July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024 with a two and a half percent salary increase for each of the three years. Motion. Uh, second. Second. And then roll call. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 And then I have a request or a motion to change the school committee meeting and the public hearing for the budget to March 22nd. I will need a motion to do that. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gitchian? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tassius? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. And now I can have a motion to adjourn from public motion. meetings. No discussion. Any discussion? <laughs> second. How about a second? Second. <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gitchian? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tassius? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Yes. Meeting adjourned.